Hi, welcome back. We've got a bunch of great tracks now. It's time to get organized and get ready to edit them. I'm going to start by hiding the inspector. I'm going to turn off input monitoring. I'll click there and it'll go off on all those channel strips because they're all the same channel strip, our Wilson Travel voiceover, just with different track names, one of which I want to change. And then I want to back them up before editing. Comp take is a little ambiguous. I don't like that name. I'm going to double click there and call it original read because that was our original read with the punch ins. And I'm going to use a key command now called track names to regions. Let me zoom in so you can see here multiple regions on this track. And the command is option shift N. And you see it renames the regions with the track name. You can also get to it from the menus under region at the bottom, track names to regions. All right, what I want to do now is make copies of these tracks so that we can preserve them in their original state as backups in case we need to revert to them for whatever reason. It doesn't take up much memory and it's pretty quick. I'm going to create a couple of new tracks, Option, Command, S. Even though we've already made a backup copy of our original read-through region, I want to do it again, this time with the punch-ins that we've done. I'm going to create another new track, and I'm going to copy that down there. Let me mute that, hit my H button to reveal my hidden tracks, and I'm going to hide that. And we have our voiceover to music, Option, drag that, mute, hide. And then our second one, option, drag that, mute, hide. And finally, our creative one, option, command S, another one, option, drag, mute, hide. Now I'll just hit my H key command to collapse all the hidden tracks from view. And there they're safely in place, tucked away in case I ever need the originals for anything, muted and hidden. All right, to start getting ready to organize, what I want to do is get rid of all the silences in between. We're going to have to listen to all the takes. And there was a lot of, you know, talking back and forth in the studio between John and myself. And I want to get rid of that. So I'm going to use a command called strip silence. You need to do this region by region. Like right there, we can see there's three main areas of text and the rest is probably me giving instructions in the headphones. So I'm going to call up the strip silence window. This can be called up either by using the key command control X or under the audio menu, strip silence, control X. Now, unfortunately, this window can't be resized and a lot of it's off screen. Uh, we'll just have to make do with that. So what this does is it strips out the silence from the regions and you have a bunch of parameters here to set. Threshold, meaning how much amplitude does it consider to be silence. So the higher the threshold, the less it'll accept the silence and the more of the background noise will get accepted. Minimum time to accept the silence, pretty self-explanatory. How many milliseconds of time there has to be or seconds in this case, milliseconds, how many seconds or milliseconds of time there has to be in order for it to be considered silence. And then there's a pre-attack and post-release time that you can set in order to accept, let's say, breaths. In this case, it's vocal. So let's say it's taking a breath, even though it's at a very low level and might fall below the threshold, you might still want that included in the region. Same thing at the end. So let's just tweak these parameters. I'm going to set that fairly low. Again, you can't really see what's off screen here, but those parameters look okay. I'm going to adjust the pre-attack time, and you can see how the graphic updates as it's adjusted. It allows more of it below, but I'm going to increase it somewhat just to allow... I don't want it to get cut too close. And same thing at the end. We can trim it more later, but I don't want to lose any of the vowels or sibilants at the end. It's still, it's easy to get them back, but better to do the edit properly the first time. So I'm going to click OK, and there you'll see our region's been split. And there was a little bit of noise in the end there. Let's unmute this so we can hear what that is. Enter. And it's just a breath or something. All right, this looks like that was a punch in. That was one intact take. Here's another region. Again, we can see here several good phrases with some silence in the middle. So I'm going to go Control X. And again, I'll just set these values to quickly to what looks like it'll work best. There we go. All right, that's working for me. I'm going to click OK. And we can tweak these later just to get the main work done. All right, that's cut or stripped. There's one that was a punch in. I'm going to leave that intact. Here's another one. And you can see there's lots of areas of good narration there, as well as areas of talk back and forth in the studio. That looks like silence. So let's call up strip silence. And sometimes it takes a bit of tweaking to get the parameters close, depending on the source material. I'm not liking that. It's giving me too many separate regions. And ultimately, there is an element of trial and error in trying to find the best settings. All right, let's go with that. OK. There we go. We'll get rid of that right there. You can see that's just a little bit of noise. 
And now we have a couple of more blocks that look intact. I don't think they need any stripping. And there I'm just going to use the marquee tool. Sometimes that works best. Lots of different ways to skin a cat and do the same thing. Um, same thing there. Let's get rid of that silence there like that. And we have here one last big read. Control X. All right. And you know what? I'm going to cancel that. Sometimes you just need to do things manually. Let me zoom our track. I just feel like doing this one manually because the strip silence didn't seem to read the spaces in here too well. And it was quicker to do this than to just fool with all the parameters and strip silence. So more than one way to skin a cat. I'm not sure what that is, but we'll listen to it. Let's see now. <laughs> right. Okay. So we don't need that. And that's stuff that would have been accepted had I used strip silence. Okay. We're getting near the end there and uh, that's it. Probably some more instructions. Let's give a listen. <coughs> all right. It's me giving him instructions. Okay. So we got basically all our takes here. There'll still be obviously some tweaking to do, but we've gotten rid of most of the, the dead parts. And get rid of that at the end. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on there to select all the regions, and I'm going to use a key command called tie regions by position change. The default key command setting for that is option and the minus on the numeric keypad. And what it does is it'll snap all the regions together to the left. So there you go. It just snapped them all to the left. You can do the same thing by changing the drag mode to shuffle left. I prefer using this because there's less chance of accidents happening. You don't have to remember to undo the drag mode afterwards. But shuffle left will do the same thing. So let me show you that in the key commands here. I had it already searched there. So there it is. Tie regions by position change option and the minus sign. And that is available also under, I believe it's the regions. There it is tie regions by position change. So there we go. Now we can listen through the takes and identify what we like and don't like. Before we do that, though, I'm going to quickly do that on the other takes as well, the voiceover with music tracks. And that's it. So I'm going to do that on my own, not to have you sit through it all, but I'll strip out what we need to there. And in the next video, we'll start auditioning them and selecting the best takes. So stay tuned and see you next time for more.